Ladies and gentlemen, ただいまより本日の第六試合を行います。And now for the sixth match. 青コーナーより安田忠男選手の入場です。Tadao Yasuda, 37 years old, 6 foot 5, 286 pounds, pro wrestler, making his mixed martial arts debut. Yeah, but pro wrestling, we have Fujita, we have Sakuraba coming from the pro wrestling. Is he going to do the same thing? That's what is on everybody's mind. He looks impressive, and when we interviewed him, he looked really calm and full of confidence. But we don't know. Takara is a—is he ever been hit hard? I mean, Takara is a good striker. He's going to hit him hard. He, he, he cannot handle a punch. We don't know. He's a sumo wrestler. Yeah, he's a wrestling. So he, he, he did sumo for 13 years. He was the third place Yakuzuma, and he was six years in the sumo major leagues. But we haven't seen sumo be too successful in mixed martial arts. As a matter of fact. I can't re really remember a sumo wrestler winning a significant contest in mixed martial arts. You're right. You're absolutely right. And his weight is down, obviously, from his sumo days, 286 pounds. He's a big guy. He's really enthusiastic about this fight. I I wonder how he's going to be able to deal with Sutake because sumo isn't really about takedowns. It's merely about pushing a guy around. Pro wrestling, on the other hand, sometimes. The guys develop submissions. Sometimes they develop their strikes, but I don't know if from the clips we saw if he has submissions or strikes. Aka Kona, Yuri, Sadake Masawak, Senshi, no Nujo, this. Comes out with the Godzilla theme. I love this. This is the original Godzilla theme well, from the original, it. from the original movie, I believe. I didn't know that, but I, I always said I think this is. I saw it the first time. I, I saw it coming up. It was in the K1, and he had this music, and everybody started standing up and applauding. I think it's the greatest song, the greatest intro song. Sataki has said against Yasuda that he will use movement, punching, and kicking. Any predicts he will knock out Yasuda early. He's going to need it. Movement because Yasuda with 286 pounds, if you can't lock him up in the corner and grab him and body slam him down, that's a lot of weight on you. Especially if he keeps side mount or mount position. Sataki, and uh, this is his fifth mixed martial art fight. He's right now one loss, actually one win and three losses. But uh, two of his losses were by decision. One was by um, actually two of his losses were uh, by he went before the distance. Mark Holman stopped him with a neck crank, uh, January 30th, 2000, and Guy Mesger beat him on a decision in May of 2000, and then he achieved his first win in mixed martial arts over Murakami Kazunari, who American audiences may remember from being in extreme fighting, and he was the one that knocked out Mark Mayo, but then Murray Smith knocked him out. He beat Murakami with punches from the mount uh, at six minutes 58 seconds in the ring. Karate practitioner Masaki Satake. The big man, Tadao Yasuda. He's got Fujita to the left in his corner, and Brian Johnston from the United States on the right. He's feeling very confident. <laughs> He's smiling. He's in good shape for this fight. 218 pounds. Satake made his name fighting in K1. He won two All Japan K1 tournaments, and he's fought some of the best fighters in K1. Peter Arts, in his estimation, was the best fighter he ever faced in K1. 
He says in this fight, he will use the invisible kick. Which is a very fast kick. <laughs> Evidently so. It's so fast, you can't even see it. Oh my God. Let, oh no. So, thank God for replay. Sataki says he can break four baseball bats with a single shin kick. Ooh. I don't know if you don't want to have that kick in the head. On your leg. Anyway. Sataki's going to move around. Yasu, oh, right hand by Sataki. Yasu coming in, giving that body lock position. Yasu uh, trying, to, trying for a side to side hit throw. We, we expected this. Yasuda does not want to stand up with Sataki, and it's obvious right now. Body lock position, going to muscle him around. Came right after him as he predicted. You remember the last time he saw Sataki against the guy Mask, he had a real good sprawl. And right now, he's also doing pretty good in defending the Tega. Now, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, I think, because he's going to go eye at the legs. No. Get the leg. Cannot hold the ropes. The referee will warn Sataki if he does hold the ropes to prevent the takedown. Sataki being in the corner, it's hard, hard to scroll back without putting your legs out of the ring, but that might actually be a good game plan here. I don't know, I don't know. I think it's dangerous. He's holding the rope again. People are already complaining. I think he should uh, dig his left arm in under the armpit of uh, Yasuda. Yeah, dig for an underhook. Yep. It looks like the referee is giving Sataki a warning for holding the ropes. Cannot hold the ropes. Uh, this does work in Sataki's favor, actually, in the fight, but as far as the judging, it doesn't because uh, the, the red card means he's got a deficit in the judges scoring in the round. Okay. Well, I believe also if the fight goes on and on and on, Sataki will be in favor because his stamina will be better. He's got to punch him, he's got to sprawl, he's got to move. He's got to basically fight the same way Ken Shamrock did against Fujita last August in Pride. He's got to sprawl and brawl. He can't be up against the ropes like this. He's got to dig the underhooks, get some position, move side to side. Got to do something. But the big man is smothering him on the ropes. Probably just a matter of time. If Yasuda does not do anything, the referee will start them back standing in the center of the ring. He's doing a great job. And it looks like he cannot take him down. He's tried a few times now. Of course, I think he's holding the ropes. He's holding the ropes. But um, I think, yeah, again, the longer we go into the match, it's going to be better for Sataki. Sataki just biding his time. I think he's probably waiting for Tadao to tire out. Because once he tires out, he's going to be, oh, he's going to be sitting duck for the strikes. Yeah, but this way, he's not going to tire out. Oh, oh good right hand, good right hand, good right hand. He's digging in. Not enough to really do damage, but he could seem to rock in that first right shot and right hook. And if he stays like this, it's going to be again. They're going to restart it again. You see, he cannot take him down. This is going to be uh, the way it goes now. I predict the KO. Okay. The last Friday, I came up with a new term called lay and pray, where the wrestler or ground fighter takes the kickboxer down and stays on and prays it doesn't stand back up. I've got a new one for you, boss. Okay. We're gonna be call we're gonna call this one lock and balk. <laughs> Where they lock you up and they balk the action. But the knees is going with the knees, so I take it back. It's not a lock and balk after all. Lock and balk. Yasuda did get busy with the knees. And he would love that. You know this guy's surprising me. Hey, right now he's doing it, but uh, now he's working. Now he's working with the knees. Before he didn't do anything, so if he keeps this going. He's really fighting a smart game here. He's waiting for his moment, and he, and he almost did a drop there. Yeah, but I don't know if it's real smart because he has to move more. Otherwise, the referee's going to unlock him again, and that's dangerous. You know, you don't want to create any distance so Sataki can punch, or Sataki is the American side. I would predict a, a restart standing, and here it is. Oh, uh, you good. What am I, Nostradamus over here? Yeah, I believe it. Now he's got a yellow card. Yeah. And he's tired, you see? Yeah, it looked like it was a lock and ball. Sataki is not tired at all. Sataki has just been there. Oh, good right hand. He's, he's landing that chopping right hand. He's got to move when he punches. Sataki should land the right hand. Oh, 
And he should step to the side. He should step to the side for the left high kick. She throw the right hand, step to the right, throw the left high kick. But it's going to be impossible to do that now. Right now, this is the longest fight of the evening. I think we're past the four minutes. He has to underhook and pull it up. Yep. Well, I think this that in this fight, if Yasuda does not get Satake down, stamina will be a factor. Oh, yeah, for sure. The K1 fighters, the Thai boxers, always have the best stamina. Trust me, because they train real hard. They have the power training. After the whole hour of training, they get like five, six rounds of three minutes power training. It's the hardest training there is. So Satake has been there all his life. He didn't do anything else. So his stamina will, will be no problem for him, I think. For Yasuda, it will. Because he's got a lot of weight to carry around. Well, Yasuda has competed in sumo. He's also competed in pro wrestling. But he says that the training for Balitudo, or mixed martial arts, is the most difficult training. Yep. He was training there in Los Angeles at LA Boxing with Brian Johnston and Fujita, also with Sean McCulley. He uh, doesn't think Satake is very strong, and it looks like he's trying to prove that right now. And he actually said he would kill Satake in seconds. Yeah, he said he was going to take him down. This fight's going to take a few seconds, eh? That was the, his comment. But uh, that didn't come to happen, or did Sitaki's quick knockout come to, come to happen? Sitaki, on the other hand, he feels Igor Volchanshin is the best uh, is the best mixed martial artist who stands up in fights. Yeah, for sure, he's got the biggest heart. He's got his the stamina. He's just a scary, scary guy to judge. Okay, here's a restart of Fabian Sataki. Oh, very nice. Now he pushed to the side. Sataki's got to move. He's got to move. He can't get trapped in the corner again. Sataki should just stick and move. Punch and move. Because he's not going to win a fight like this. This one's going to be hard to score, actually, for the judges. Both men have had yellow cards. Uh, so, basically, I've got an even round, boss. No, I think uh, Sataki, he, he, he came through with uh, more punches. He hit him actually with a few punches. Right now, Yasuda is kneeing him. Well, Yasuda landed knees to the body, though, so... Yeah, but he closes the distance for a reason, you know, and, and, and it doesn't work, his takedown, so I don't know. You should count. Yeah. When you watch a fight like this, boss, do you ever have flashbacks to your own fighting career? Uh, a, a fight, not a fight like this. Because um, I never been in this position. When I fight a wrestler, they want to put me on my back <laughs> as quick as they can. Why is that? And they, and they, and they probably also, they also already always succeed. But uh, yeah. It's the same thing that he's trying to do. It. I tell you, um, Sataki, he's got a good takedown defense. I mean, this is a bad position for Sataki to be in. If any other wrestler wouldn't take him down there, you know? He'd grab the leg behind the knee and pop, just pull him on the ground. Well, maybe a wrestler from freestyle wrestling, or maybe like a Dan Henderson or a Mark Holman or something, but Yasuda being from pro wrestling and sumo wrestling, it's a different kind of... Yeah, it's, it's not really about takedown. Yeah, it's only yeah pushing. Right? So, I, I mean, pro wrestling, they learn takedown, some of them, but it's, it's mainly about show. Yeah, and in sumo, it's pushing each other out of the ring. But all you really have to do is reach down and grab that leg and step back. That's it. And he's got it. Okay, he's warning him for a headbutt. Looks like we're having another restart, which is good. Be interesting to see if Sataki can land that bomb. Sataki's got to move. Got to move. To, he's, he's moving straight back. That's the problem. When Yasuda charges in, Sataki moves straight back. Constantly. If he, if he took a step to the side, now Yasuda digging the right hand to the body, which he showed his knees. Now he's showing us a punch. That's good. That's good. It looks, like his, for it. It looks like his stamina is uh, deceptively there so far. Yep. He hasn't gotten tired. I was actually impressed by his attitude during the interview that we did with him a few days ago. Oh, yeah. He looked really confident. Very confident. He didn't look like he was taking this fight lightly, and he didn't look like he was taking this fight as a joke. Sataka trying to chop up with the knee and the left hook. None of them landed. He's laughing. Oh, he's doing the Eagle Rope Chanson punch. Where he wraps around the guy's head and knuckles him on the, on the ear. <laughs> yeah. Like, only Igor does it with a little bit more angry power, so to say. He's at about 
50 some odd fights to practice that punch. Sadaki being in his fifth six month on fight and having lost most of them. The last one minute from the first round. Well, the interesting thing is, this is Tadao Yasuda's uh, mixed martial art debut, but because Sataki has had less than success, it's kind of an even match on paper. Yeah. Yeah, especially also the weight difference. You know, he's bigger, but in less experience. Still, he should grab the leg, step backwards, like you said, and take him down. But maybe he's going to get some instructions in about 30 seconds from his corner when the bell goes. Yasuda has definitely been the busier fighter. He's definitely dictated how this fight was fought. I would have to give him a, an edge of the scoring right now. Yeah, me too, me too. He's, he's getting more active uh, the longer the fight goes, so that's real good. In the beginning, he didn't work. Now he's working for it, so he's doing a good job. He's trying harder. He, as I said before, he's making Sataka. There we go, end of round one. It is a 10-minute round. Uh, we will have two. We're scheduled for two subsequent five-minute rounds uh, if they both go the distance. And finally, the ring girls have, have, have some work. This is the first time we see the ring girls in the ring. Yeah, Yasuda is tired. He looks tired. He will get some uh, directions now, some strategy moves. But I think Sataki also, Sataki, they probably will tell him step to the side and counter with an uppercut or a right straight. But move out of his way. If the train comes straight at you, step aside. Uh, both fighters look fairly fresh. Yasuda may be uh, the more spent of the two, but Sataki looks completely fresh. Yeah. He looks like he just did his warm-up, and hopefully that was his warm-up, and he'll get busy. He does need to start using lateral movement. Here we go. Sataki trying to knock him out with one punch, but it grazed down and didn't really have a lot on it. Uh, Yasuda down on one knee, but it wasn't from the punch. It was from his own footwork. Maybe you should... Uh Twist over from here. Oh no, an elbow. It would be a very hard thing to do right now. The right elbow. Especially since elbows are illegal, illegal. right? Yeah, but it, 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 looked, it looked like it was the right hand and it followed up by an elbow. So I think... Um, I think it was unintentional. Here no, we yeah, yeah, and for sure. It was in, unintentional. In the corner, Yasuda throwing the knee. Those are good knees. Those are digging in, even though Yasuda obviously isn't... Uh, real, real uh, school in Muay Thai. Those are good knees. They're, yeah, you see, they having their impact because the body, Sataki, is going backwards, backwards. They were good knees. His punches too, actually. His uh, the right uh, uppercuts he gave to the body. There were some solid uh, strikes through there. He should do that. Step out and follow it up with a right uppercut to the head or something because he's got the power to push himself away. But I really don't think he's got the footwork to step back and do any pivots. Yeah, yes, real right in that. Sataki trying to throw that right hand and still moving straight back. Now he gets to the side a little bit, but Yasuda traps him in the corner again. They told him, obviously, to grab the back of the leg because he went for it right away. But he's doing the underhook, Sataki. He's doing it very well. Yasuda might actually fall back and fall to the side. That would be a way to take him down, too. Oh, yeah. If he gets a double underhook, which he has right now, actually, he's got a single underhook. They're in an over-underhook uh, position right now. He could fall back to the side and get them on the get him on the ground and scramble and get top control. So, this position he's been in for 10 times already now. If Sataki wants to win this fight, he's, there's a knee. I was going to say, he's got to start throwing knees because obviously because his hands are locked up. He, oh, good knee to the chin. Very nice. Sataki's got to get busy. He's got to take this round. He's got to take a chance. Yasuda is laying on him, so he's not really worried about him stepping back and, as we said, trying for a takedown. So he's got to start throwing knees. Even if they're light knees to the, to the leg, and go through the body, and if Yasuda leans over to the side again, he's got to try to uh, knee him in the head. Yep. Knees to the, to the leg would be a very good thing right now to do. Even though he can't get the velocity because he's got the... Okay, they're going to restart the fighters again. Can't get the velocity when your back is to the corner because yep. you need to put that leg back and then throw it out there. 
As Sataki needs movement. He's got to move. He's got to move side to side. Now he's got some side to side movement finally. Sataki, good left hand. Very nice. Now he's going for it. He's, he's got going to the side. He's moving circles now. He's doing perfect. He had some real good instructions from his corner too, I think. Sataki with some strikes there. Hard for him to land clean with Yasuda raging at him. Going for the body lock. No what was it? No Whoa. Looks like Yasuda going for a double leg here. Sataki underhooking, but Yasuda could, could pull this off. He really could. All he has to do is lift up. Yeah, I know, but maybe he's tired already, you know, because he, it, it took a lot of power out of him, maybe. Plus, a man, a man built like him to crouch forward yeah, like that, that's a lot of also. effort to go all the way back up. Yep. Because you need real solid abs for that, and, well, I don't want to state the obvious. <laughs> so, you can reach my goal. Do you think that Sataka can knock him out? Yes, I think so. I think so. I think he can. I think he was hot on his way. The last one there. He was hot on his way. The interesting thing is, uh, the man in Yasuda's corner, Kazuyuki Fujita, has got probably the best chin, the ability to take a punch in mixed martial arts. Yeah, in the world. In the, in so the, if this guy, if that's any reflection on this guy, if this guy, He's already taken a couple shots by Sataki. Has, hasn't really even been rocked. Maybe this guy can take a punch like... Maybe they do some special jaw training. Chew a lot of gum no, or something. No, no, no. I think there's nobody in the world who, who has a thicker skull than Fujita. I mean, I saw him getting taking some knees from Marker, from uh, Ken Shamrock. And Gilbert Idle did a jump flying knee and landed. Yeah, and it's nothing. His leg last week, you told me that his leg still, it was still hurting. From being Fujita in the head. Yeah. Gilbert told you that. Yeah. So, uh, no, he definitely is the strongest guy. Well, Yasuda has absorbed a few punches, and he really didn't get rocked, so he doesn't have a glass jar like some. Sometimes we'll see people from pro wrestling or other. Oh! Some, well, he almost. Twice. Scoot it up. Yeah, screwed it out. Well, they have few good news. That's a good thing for him to do. He has to work like that because otherwise it's not going to happen. But he knows also he's he's ahead on points. And this is uh, round two, I don't know. It's going to be like an eagle round. Round one, I give to yesterday. If Sataki does land a shot and gets Yasuda moving backwards, he will beat him. But while Yasuda is moving forward, he's not going to beat him. Well, it's very difficult. Because Yasuda dropping down, getting position, getting out. Now, oh, they're down. Okay, now, this is going to be a difficult position for Sakaki because he's new on the ground. He's mounted. Oh. It's the end of the round. Oh. oh, God. Right when it looked like Yasuda was getting ready for a finish. Yasuda looks real tired. He's falling on the ground. He's crawling onto his chair. He's real tired. Sataki looks real fresh. I think under the circumstances, with the stamina aspect, Sataki's got to move around in circles now. Yes. Let him chase after him, get tired, throw a high kick. High kick, or just go for the right straight, right uppercut. I would use uppercuts when he comes in. A right uppercut would be the greatest punch because he's lowering himself to go for that uh, body lock position. He can slip in the right uppercut. Like Randy Couture does. Randy Couture, yeah. Oh, you have to see heavyweight champion, Randy Couture. A great fighter. Here we are to the action. Oh, they're trading here. Yasuda trading with Sataki. Yasuda ducking down. That would be great to ride uppercut right there. And again, see? But Sataki, those punches are not landing cleanly because he's moving while he's punching. That's the unfortunate thing. A knee is what I would throw because he gets down like that a knee. That but would be very but good for, a, for a big guy, he's pretty he's a little faster than I expected. Oh yeah, he is. No, but all, all the sumos are like that. The fast, the fast people. Yeah, they're real fast. Okay, here's the right hand, a glazing shot, and Sataki moving side to side as we had 
instructed him. Actually, good, good, chop, good, left good left hook, but not enough. Apparently, uh, it's hard to deliver the knockout punch while you're moving. Yeah. But uh, even even that being said, Yasuda can take a little bit of a shot. Oh yeah, he can take some shots. But now he's real tired. Well, we have to see. You know what? Once the stamina kicks in and you're tired, you can't take a punch. Also, that body work would be good. But since he's got a thick layer in front of his belly, I wouldn't go for that. Okay, he's going. Shitake, he's, got, he's got to move. He's got to move. But now also, yesterday knows that he can take him down. So probably he's gonna get all his power, try to do it again. And then, once he's on top, he can use his weight to try to finish the fight. I think Yasuda has put, he's going for the takedown again. He knows that if he gets him down, he can control the fight better on top of Sitake, because Sitake is limited on his back. Yeah, which is very large. You know, I mean, he hasn't shown the ability to uh, reverse the mount or to get past the mount and get uh, sweeps or anything from the bottom. And Sataki should throw that left knee here. Should throw that left God, knee. To the liver. Right, right straight up that left knee. He's got it back. He's got it back up. He should throw the left knee right now and dig it in to the body of Yasuda. That would really take a step in the way. Yasuda is doing a good thing here, turning Sataki out. If he can get his back toward the center of the ring, he could take him down. Sataki should throw the left knee with his back to the uh, corner like this. Just bring the left knee up. Catch the floating rib. Catch him to the side of the uh, abdomen. Yeah, you want to hit him at the moment he breathe, breathes in. And then throw the knee in. That would be great to knock the wind out of him. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That would hurt him. Yeah. Here talking with the right hand. Same thing, moving straight back into the corner again. Crowd getting restless. <laughs> okay, going for the double. Going for the double leg. Almost got it. That's a nice underhook, and it's surprising me all the time. Shitake Shitake. continues to improve. He's training also in, uh, with Sakuraba. He trained uh, a little bit, huh? That's right. That's right. He probably has a good take on defense. Because so Sakuraba is a master in takedown defense. And a takedown. And in takedown. Well, yeah. One goes hand in hand with the other. Yeah. That uh, second round loss. Yeah. Who won the round? I, I think it would be like equal. M maybe Sataki because he, he delivers a few punches, but then again. Uh, Yasuda started to throw the knees at the end, so I, I, maybe equal. The first round, I think, Yasuda. Yasuda. And the second round, maybe equal. So if he's going to continue like this, he probably is going to win the fight. Plus, really, really, he had also a takedown in the second round. He's really going for the uh, leg there. If Sataki the guillotine choke, uh, he could take him out right here. Oh, yeah. But uh, you take a chance when you do that. Sataki's scooting out of the corner. Doesn't get the doesn't get a restart. Sataki's got to throw the knee. He should, he should just throw the knee straight at the middle, hit him in the stomach. He should step aside and then punch. When you're almost in the corner and you punch, it's easy for him to to, to, to push you backwards in the corner. He should go to the side. Then he's got the whole ring behind him and then attack him again. To create some space. I mean, I've got to tell you, if there was one element in Yasuda's game, stamina has impressed me because I didn't think he was going to last this long. Yeah, me too. I thought for sure this is going to be like over the run, five, uh, two or three. Sataki should throw the left knee right here. Should throw it. These are good knees again. Yeah, Yasuda getting the busier of the action. Sataki, I think he's just waiting for a restart so he can try for a knockout. I really think that's his game plan. Yeah, but what, what is the time we get left? There's the restart. But maybe there's going to be like a minute and ten seconds left. Sataki's got it. Oh, Hail Mary punch misses. Get away out of the corner. Who does it? Yasuda. Yasuda chopping away. Getting down to seconds left in this one. He should throw hard knees now, Yasuda. Straight up. Boom. To the body. Well, Yasuda leaning his head down like that. He should go, try for a high knee. 
if he, if he could just get the arm over to go for a guillotine choke, this guy being tired, he could choke himself out so quickly. Yep. Just from his own fatigue. Yep. That's but true. not everybody has a coach like you, Stephen. The corner, huh? Well, I'm merely the pond reflecting the oncoming stone, Mr. Wooten. <laughs> the fight professor, Stephen Corbin. And I'm here with Boss Wooten and Wapo. Ride fighting championships. Oh, collision course. Sorry for it again. It's like these guys have collided and stayed. Oh, there's that high knee. Did that rock him? No, nope, it didn't rock him. Uh, okay, that's the end of the round. I got to give it to Yasuda. Yeah, me too. Not a real exciting fight, no. but he did what he had to do within his limitations. Yep. And then for, his, for him to fight his first fight like this, you know, it's very understandable. Yeah, Sataki is complaining to the people. Uh, he says, I'm sorry. Don't show the real me. Now, I wonder. What are they gonna say? I think we uh, we're gonna be right. I think uh, Yasuo is gonna win. But I was gonna be a a draw. One of them. No, there's no draws. Uh, Yak Yasuda charging in, and here we go with the decision. the other way, I mean, nothing personal against Sotaki, but Yasuda was the uh, more aggressive fighter, for sure. And yeah. Sotaki was not effective enough with the strikes. His, he landed a few glances blows, but didn't do any damage. No. Nope. Yeah, right decision. It's a right decision. It's a good decision. Split decision. Now we have Antonio Inoki in the ring. I was wondering if he's going to slap him again. I hope so. No, uh, <laughs> I don't hope so. Wow. He, he can take a punch. We saw it. Yeah, he can. You're looking tired and you're not doing something, all right? Okay. Just keep that in mind. I, you can do whatever you want to do off that, but I just noticed that that's what I'm picking up and that's what I'm going to say. All right? And you know that you're looking still and you're looking tired and I'm looking. You're looking vulnerable as well. Um, this was a last minute thing. Um, you're going to be fighting a uh, with Igor Bovshanchin. Um, how do you feel about this? Uh, I'm excited about it. It's uh, it a last minute thing and uh, Ken got injured uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, it's a big opportunity for me to, to, and I'm very thankful to be able to step in here and uh, hopefully knock him out. Um, Igor Bovchanchin is known to be a hard puncher. Um, he's a very hard fighter. Um, I don't think he's lost in any of the Pride series. Uh, what do you feel about fighting with a guy like that? Uh, nervous. Uh, normally, I don't, like I was telling them, I don't normally get nervous for a fight. This is a big fight for me. Uh, he hits very hard, and uh, this is one of those fights that uh, you make a mistake, you're going to wake up and ask what happened. And uh, but that goes both ways for him as well. So it's whoever makes the first mistake in here is going to be in a lot of trouble, I think. Kick. Pow. Pow. You do that. 
There we go. That's not the janitor. That's not that. That's not that. Okay. Has Ken or Guy given you any advice? Uh, Ken gives me advice all the time. Guy and I argue all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you argue about? Uh, no, I'm just kidding about it. We don't, we don't argue. He thinks he was sexy and passionate. <laughs> yeah. And what do you think about that? Hurt, hurt my feelings that he got. The main argument was he thought he should have been the sexy passionate. Well, the truth is, I was asked first and I turned it down. And he took, you know, so. so actually, Guy was a runner up? Uh, he was a runner up. I should have been Mr. Texas. <laughs> Have you ever talked to Igor before? Oh yeah, we're friends. Uh, uh, I respect the guy a lot. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a great guy, great quality guy, and one hell of a warrior. So it uh, makes for an exciting fight. That's why I'm so nervous for this fight. Normally, it's, it's funny because normally I don't get nervous for a fight. In this fight, I was, I've been on edge ever since I've been here, and which hopefully that'll be a good thing going into the ring. And now for the seventh match. Aukonayori, Trey Terigman, Senshiro, Nujo. Okay, here he comes. He is from Fort Worth, Texas, in the United States. Trey Trauma Telegram out of the Lions Den, Ken Shamrock's gym. Now, Trey took this fight when his teacher. Ken Shamrock was injured with a neck injury, and that happened, uh, he took it, what, like two weeks' notice? Yeah, two weeks, two weeks. But the good thing about taking a fight on two weeks' notice is that you, um, it, it, it gives you a different feeling in your head because there is now a reason also people can understand if you lose. So he probably will go for it. And all the Lions Den guys, they always train. They go and train at full power. So taking the final two weeks notice he's always in training you know he only two weeks ago he really started training real hard that's the difference but i think it will bring him more relaxed into the ring trey telegram uh if any of you out there have not seen him fight was injured in a car accident when he was one and a half years old and he lost his pectoral muscle so when he takes his shirt off don't be surprised if he uh looks uh a little bit different then. Uh, he's 36 years old, six foot one and a half, coming in at a very svelte 220 pounds. In his corner, he will have Guy Mesger, Pete Williams, and Alex Andrade. And that's a good team. That's a real good team. And like you said before, the the the, the Lions that team is getting better and better and standing up. So, and Trey has always been a hard hitter. I think this is going to be a very interesting match. Ice cold. The, the two words say it. Ice cold. I've seen Igor fight a number of times. I've met Igor. You've met Igor. Igor is, he's got this almost like a choir boy personality. Yeah. He's shy, looks down. He, he's not a real smack talker. He doesn't make big interviews, big predictions. His answers are short when he's asked questions. And he's, he's real nice, and he's got a big handshake, because that, that hand of his is <laughs> like scary. I mean, when that hand goes around your hand and you shake his hand, you think, wow, this guy could probably really punch hard with his hand. And then you see him punch really hard, and you think, oh my god. And also, when you when you hug him, your arms get to go around. It's like one compact, solid rock. This guy, if there were anyone in martial arts, mixed martial arts, that was built like a fire plug, yeah. it's this guy. 
guys. Are sure. He's, he's built like a little linebacker or something. He can, he can punch from every position because he doesn't have to be afraid to break his hand. His bone structure is like two fingers of mine. It's like one finger of his. And the thing is, with, with his hands, whereas a lot of people like myself or you will make a, will make a, a, a fist, our knuckles press up against the skin. Yeah. He's got a layer of skin yeah. over his knuckles somehow. Yeah. I don't know how that works. I don't know either. It's, it's scary. This guy was built to punch people. Yeah. He's, He's five foot nine, 242 pounds of dynamite. God knows it's in the... It, he is a Russian experiment, what we don't know of. Like, let's build a fighting machine and see what we can do. We see Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock is, now. Yeah, Ken Shamrock has joined the corner of Trey Telegman. Uh, Igor getting ready, making the sign of the cross. Really a nice, slow uh, entrance into the ring. Igor, ice cold ball champion. Perhaps the most feared puncher in mixed martial arts. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the UFC middleweight champion, Tito Ortiz! <laughs> Tito Ortiz. It's good to see Tito. Tito's had some classic battles with, with Guy Mesger of the Lion's Den, Jerry Bolander of the Lion's Den, and Frank Shamrock, who was formerly with the Lion's Den. And it looks like he's going to present uh, some flowers to Trey Teligman to wish him good luck in his battle with Igor Vovchanchin. Uh, Tito looks real stylish with those sunglasses. These are for him. And there it is. Tito Ortiz, and he's going to present the flowers of good luck to uh, the Ukrainian punching machine, Igor Vovchanchin. A nice jacket Tito's got on. A shameless advertising. Tito Ortiz. You know, he's got the bad boy persona, but he's really a likable guy. Very nice guy. There he is, Trey Trauma Teligman. Ego Bob To the untrained eye, boss, a person may look at the body type of Igor Chanson and think, well, Igor, he doesn't have the bodybuilder body, so make a, a conclusion yeah. about his stamina, per se. Yeah. But that's a complete misconception. It's very deceiving. Totally. It's, it's like Peter Ernst. You see Peter Ernst, it's the same thing. You think, ah, he will have a, his stamina will be not, will be not good. But uh, you don't want to fight against him. Uh, I expect somebody to get punched in this fight. They're both real heavy hitters. Trey is light on his feet here. Trey needs to stick and move in this fight. He can't trade with Vovchanchin. Vovchanchin will throw that overhand right. I would think Vovchanchin might take this fight to the ground. I don't know. I, I don't think Vovchanchin can take this fight to the ground. I think uh, Trey's good in takedown defense. I think if it goes to the ground, Trey, Trey will do it. But Trey may not expect Vovchanchin to take him to the ground, thinking he's just going to do a stand-up fight. That's true. That's true. I don't know. It's a reflex build-in, I guess. I hope. You know. If Trey outboxes Vovchanchin, I believe Vovchanchin will try for takedown. Oh, yeah. But Vovchanchin with a low kick there. Had some sting on it. Uh, Trey getting some instructions to move to the right. And he's... Uh, Get out of that left hoop. He's got to stop standing there. He's got to, he's got to use movement. Trey has got to use movement here. Well, chance of coming in with a swarm of punches, most of them blocked. To the body. No. Trey with a low kick. No chance of grabbing it now. Well, chance will grab that low kick with his left hand, throw the overhand right, knock somebody down like he did with Kerr, Shoji, and other people. You see, Eagle got real good reflexes while he's 
moving backwards, he still counters with his right. But Trey also, oh, Trey at uh, 36 years old is nine years older than Eagle Book Chanson at 27 years old. And Trey does definitely have the height advantage. Looks like we got a boxing match. Both Chanson with a good right hand and followed with a low kick. Looking good. Look at the size of both Chanson's legs compared to Trey. Both Chanson, I've never quite seen a tree trunk leg like that in a kickbox. It's, solid. It's, it's like his whole body is built the same. Well, Jansen ducking down, not a good place to be if Trey Telegram has got a knee attack. He doesn't want to have his head down low like that. It, it's looking good. It's, it's going to be a great fight. I, I think Trey is fighting a real, Trey's fighting a real good game plan. He's got, to, he's got to get out of the corner, though. He can't stand there. If Eagle punches, he's got to either tie Eagle up or step to the side or punch back or all of the above. You saw Igor attacking with a, a liver shot first and then connecting with the right hand. He's very smart. He's attacking the body first. That went up. Igor with a left hook lead, right hand both missed. Uh, this is the first time we've really seen Igor uh, do some stand-up with another guy who's got reasonably decent stand-up. Yeah. Most of the time people try to take it. Igor hooking in. Gary Goodrich gave Igor a hard fight in the Pride Fighting Championship's uh, first fight. And he used the jab, the double jab, the triple jab to set up his right hand. Now the referee, Igor doesn't jump on him. The referee coming in to the break. But as I was saying, Gary used the double jab to really throw off Igor. It was the speed that uh, frustrated Igor. Trey might want to use the jab here. And also the knees, Gary came through with good knees to the body of uh, Igor. I think that uh, Trey should do things like that too. The Trey is circling. Oh, good left hook by both Chanson. Constantly follows up with the liver kick. It looks like uh, that one kick got a little bit low. Oh, it's really unfortunate because Igor did land a really good left hook. Uh, Trey's going to get a little bit of time here to recuperate. Igor right away apologized. That's what we talked about before, you know, this this guy, when you meet him outside the ring, it's totally different, you know. Now also you see him, he's, he wants to win, he wants to go, he wants to punch, he wants to knock you out, but once he makes a little mistake, he right away apologizes. Igor is getting a yellow card uh, for the unintentional, I'm sure, groin kick. And uh, there's the left hook, landed right on the side of the jaw, and that kick, uh, unfortunately, was low. It could have been lower, but it's still, nonetheless, that's that's a damaging kick. And, uh, and Igor apologized immediately. He doesn't want to break the rules. He's not a dirty fighter. Nope. He's probably the, maybe one of the cleanest fighters there is in the business. Yeah, because he doesn't need it also. You know, this is a guy who's really secure, really confident on himself. He doesn't need things like that. He will never do that on purpose. The unfortunate thing about a groin kick, there was that hook again, is that it will take away your stamina. Yeah, and all the time that he's going to get hit now, even when he's going to get low kicked, Trey is going to feel it. Punches to the body, Trey is going to feel it. It's going to hurt through all the fight. That's the worst thing about a kick to the groin. Though. Well, we saw an unintentional low kick to the groin before in Pride 11 when Gilbert Eibel faced Vanderlei Silva. Yeah. What was expected to be an absolute out-and-out -out Muay Thai war ended within the first minute or so, Vanderlei unintentionally kicked Gilbert right on the groin, and unfortunately the fight could not continue as a result. But here we go, Trey Telegram ready to go. He knows Igor didn't mean that. Interesting to see if that left hook of Igor Volk chances will land again. Igor coming in with a fake jab. He wants to go now. Trey should throw a jab here. He should jab, double jab, and move. He should jab, move to his, uh, actually. Oh, both chance of getting the better of that exchange. Overhand right. So Trey Pelican answering back with a left hook. Oh, and that was a good punch. Trey knows that Igor can be found with that left hook. Trey trying, Trey really trying here. 
Pedro Hizzo, who's the number one contender in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, has gone on record and said that Trey Tulligan gave him his toughest fight, and it wasn't a stand-up war with Hizzo. Wow, this is a tough fight. Trey should, Trey should, Trey should take him down. Try to go for a takedown and get a tackle. He's gonna say knee, but there it is. Oh, good roundhouse kick. There's another low kick by Trey. Trey really came alive after that accidental great one shot. Well, Chancey looks like he's getting a little winded. Yeah. Oh, oh. good left. Well, Chancey's down. Well, Chancey's oh. down in the guard. Trey Tilligan. Was it, was it a punch? I don't know. It looked like it was. It looks like well, Chancey may be a little bit dizzy here. He should pass it. He should pass the guard. Trey should pass the guard now. He's going to open guard. If Trey Tellegman beats Igor Volchansha, it will be Buster Douglas Tyson. It will be Rocky Balboa beating Apollo Creed. It will be huge. Oh, yeah. Trey, you went down. You went down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what the time is. How many? What's the time do we get left on the ground now? You see, here we go. He stands up. He's going to have to pass the guard so he can get some more pain, some more power. This is good, good what he's doing now. Trey is, Igor should uh, grab his heels when he stands up like that and try and flip him over into the mouth. Yep, like he they already tried, but Trey, Trey's got some good balance. There we go. He's getting instructions to pass both chances guard. Both chances now has uh, a closed guard, which is going to make it harder, but because both chances legs are short, it's hard for him to even achieve a closed guard. Yeah. Oh, I him there almost. Yeah, it's very difficult for him. He's got very thick legs, and it Trey's also is wide. It would also be hard to get a leg lock. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go for a leg lock on this No way. Because if you lose the position, and he's going to climb on top of you. <laughs> That's a position you don't want to have. Yeah, do what he did with Ibsen and Oye and Mark Kerr. Yeah, pound you. And even Coleman said that the punches he got from he received from Igor while Igor was from the bottom. It hurt him a lot. He said, I felt those punches. This is a smart thing to do. I really, three minutes left. I really didn't expect to see Igor Bobchanchin on his back. I, I actually, to tell you the truth, I did. I, I thought that Trey was going to box and then just take him down because... Trey jumping up, Trey backing into the guard. We've never seen Igor submit anyone from the guard or even basically come close. No, nope. he's pretty much a defensive ground fighter. Yeah, and then especially a guy like Trey. I don't think, uh, I mean, we saw him against Thomas Bahadurin, but I, they're, they're not going to submit Trey. You know, he, he knows his game. All the guys from the lines then, they train them on each other, you know, and they're all good grapplers. He's, he's doing good. And um, the last strike uh, exchange they gave, he, he won that exchange. For sure he did. It started all with that left jab. It was more of a solid jab right on the jaw of uh, Igor. Yeah, I, I, I had said all along that the jab is the key to fighting a guy like Igor because Igor, because he usually has a reach disadvantage, if you have a fast jab and can move, you could outbox him. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, he, he's got long arms, straight got long arms. He's got a good reach. He has a good reach. I think now it's going to come down to conditioning. If Trey can maintain his conditioning, he could pull this fight out. But if he comes back, let's say they're obviously going to restart this. I don't know if he's going to finish both chances. Look at both chances' leg from the low kicks. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to say, he's white, and anything shows on him. If you see him always after a fight, it looks like he's been in a war, his face. He's got the scratches everywhere. It's because of his skin. I think he just bruises easy. Trey trying to ground up, but Igor putting the knees together and pushing Trey back. Trey may want to initiate back in the stand-up. He backs up. I, it would not be good, though. He doesn't want to stand up with Igor because Igor's got that one-punch knockout power. One minute. Igor back up. Igor's going to throw that left. He's going to throw the right hand. Igor's going to throw the right hand. Whoa, he's shooting. Oh, Igor slipping to the mat. That's one of the disadvantages of going barefoot. Now, they're really... The only reason why you wouldn't want to wear shoes in the pride now is because if you don't have a good defense against the leg lock. Yeah. Because you can kick with shoes now. Yeah. 
So there's really no point in not wearing shoes unless you don't know how to defend a, a heel hook. Yeah, then you're going to be in disadvantage. And obviously, Trey knows how to defend the leg lock. And uh, I don't think um, Igor will... Uh, we never, ever saw Igor win with a submission, I think. No, no. never. Uh, so Igor, Igor has won via submission in some tournaments in Russia. He has. But we haven't seen him win in pride in submission. He mainly wins with either knockout, standing, or ground and pound. This is a smart thing that Trey does. He hits the back, the hamstring. Okay, now that, that's a real good round. I don't know that Trey did enough to pull the round out because Igor was pretty much giving him a little bit of a stand-up uh, beating, you know, occasionally. But uh, I think Volchanchin knows now he's in a fight. And it's, it's, it's not going to be a cakewalk. No, this last-minute substitution came to rumble. That's what I say, man. They, he just don't care. He doesn't care, and now he's here to fight. That's what Trey wants to do. And he's got what he said in the beginning, in the opening of the show. Here's Kent giving him instructions. Yeah, he's got the opportunity to go straight to the top. There we go. Okay, now Bob Jensen chopping away, slugging it out, kind of getting wild with his punches, missing a lot of them. But it's just that one shot. Now here, here we go. I think we're gonna go to the ground right now. Trey opening up with that jab. Now that's the weapon he wants to use. Trey going to the body. Bochanchin up top. They're shooting it out here. Bochanchin getting the better. Looks like an unintentional headbutt there. And Bochanchin in his corner. Bochanchin has been down on points. He's been down on luck. All the time. Come back. Yeah, always. And Trey Telegman getting the water from Alex Andrade, getting some instructions from Ken Shamrock right there in front of him. Ken Shamrock has got to be proud so far of the results. Oh, that was, the left that I that was a about. good, that rocked Igor, because that was a half hook, half, a half hook, half jab, um, right there, right on the button, and it rocked Igor. Yep. As, as I said before, this is the first time we've seen Igor in with a guy with even reasonable stand-up skills. Yeah, that was a good one. Solid left. Boom, right on the jaw. I think that's going to send him back to training camp to get those fundamentals, keep those hands up, because there will be other tasks that are ahead for Igor of stand-up fighters like Pedro Hizo, Gilbert Ivo. There's some stand-up fighters out there that are going to throw bombs at your head. Oh, yeah. And Igor being 5'9", his head being shorter than the taller 6'3 guys, it's going to be yep. easier to hit him. Trey, I think, has got a whole lot of confidence entering into round two here. He's doing a good job. Now, let's see who's going to start the road. That's good logic. We saw also in the replay at the, at the back, the back uh, side of Trey's legs uh, show marks from the low kicks. Igor. I don't know how that is going to affect him in the fight. It's like Igor's trying to lure him in to the counter. He's trying to lure him in, kind of stepping back a little bit. Igor has a, a couple different strategies. A lot of times he'll initiate the attack and he'll... There he goes. A left right and a left high kick didn't really land kind of to the body. He was going for that right hand and came up short. He's going for that body kick, constantly to the liver. Left kick, he makes a left right and follows it up with the liver kick. Igor used to compete at cruiserweight and weigh 185 pounds. I saw him at that weight for the first time I saw him fight in Kiev. He was like 195. God, Igor with a good right uppercut there. Sorry, boss. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, he used to be 195, 200 pounds. He was fast. I think the extra weight with Igor has added to his power, but I think it's taken away his speed a little bit. Yeah, but still... It's oh, good left hook by Trey Telegman. That was a really solid shot. And Igor, as I had predicted, went for a single leg takedown there. He should have needed him right there, Trey. There it is, boss. Yeah, but to the head when his head was down. That was good. That rocked him again. Trey Telegman seems to be exposing. Oh, beautiful trip take down there. Igor gets guard, though. It could be in for another slowdown here. Trey Telegman landed a good shot. Now, we're seeing maybe a little bit of a weakness in Igor's uh, armor here. Oh, 
for the left hand. Yep. Two times in a row. And hard. Yeah, because solid blow. Trey can hit. Pedro Hizzo said that Trey had him in trouble. Oh, yeah. Trey Trauma. He doesn't get that name for nothing. Yeah. Igor's got to be thinking, what are my options here? He's really got to get him standing back up, but standing back up, it was just that one punch. Trey, if he paces himself, keeps his stamina under control, has a chance to sweep this out. Oh, he has a chance to win the fight for sure. Wouldn't that be enough? Upset. If he won, if he won on decision, it would be an upset. If he won on a KO, like historic, would be like I said before, it'd be Tyson Buster Douglas. Not that, not to denigrate Trey Tullin's fighting ability because he is a very talented fighter. But right now he's not in the top ten. If he beats Igor, he'll be in the top ten. He'll be way up in the top ten. Boom with a boom. Then who's going to fight next? <laughs> it looks good. Everything looks good. He shoots ten. Keep, keep uh, throw the knees and the hamstring of uh, Igor almost uh, got him on his side. Trey doesn't want to eat, have Igor on his back. That's what he doesn't want because Igor can pound a guy from if he has his back. Oh yeah. It's uh, Igor is uh, it's very good at. Also, when you're on all fours and he's, he's sitting behind you, like he did with Mark Kerr, it's very difficult to escape. He, he's got a, a good grip for some reason. My body head, there you go. Yeah, he's got very good reflexes. And you saw the sweep almost worked, huh? It's also because of his short legs. He's got a lot of leverage. He can get heels on hips so easily because his heels are almost on the guy's hips right now in the open guard. Yeah. <laughs> Trey should work. work a little hard here, with a few right straights, like body shots, and then to the head, just to show the judges that he really wants to go for it. Right now, it appears to me that Igor is merely surviving. Yeah. He's not really doing anything offensively. He's not doing anything to reverse the position. He's not, he's not trying for a sweep. He's not trying for really anything other than to smother the punches of Trey and occasionally land his knuckleball around the outside and to hit uh, Trey on the ear. Yep. He's holding his arms, Trey's arms. See, Trey constantly has to pull them out. That's what he should do. He should continue. I wonder why he starts kicking or something. I wonder why Trey doesn't try to pass the guard. Whoa, that was a good right hand. That was a good shot. If he can do this in the third round, he's going to win the fight. Okay, I, Trey won that round. Yep, for sure. Because Igor uh, wasn't, he, he came out and tried to exchange with Trey, but after a while he got hit with that left hook and he went for the takedown. <laughs> and good, and every time he went for the takedown, he got the takedown. He's got a good takedown. Should well, use it. Now, boss, you're a fighter. Have you ever had a last-minute substitution of uh, an opponent you knew nothing about or an opponent that you didn't really... Here's, here's the... Let's see where, where Trey... Where, where, now, Igor is trying to land those punches, but he's missing a lot of shots here. Let's see if they show that hook. Yep. I think now the left hook. Oh. Igor with the overhand right. Looks like it was on the back of the head of Trey. Igor using good head movement there to avoid a lot of the punches from Trey Telegman. Have you ever had a last minute change in your opponent and you lost your fire in, no. your, in your own training? No, I didn't. I, I, I had some opponents who I didn't know nothing about. There's that left hook. That was the one, and that rocked him. That really rocked him. I He's hope they show it again. Yeah. Ball right on the jaw. The same hook that only then with the left that uh, Henderson gave to Hendo, it looked like it was right on the jaw, behind the ear. There it is again. Fuck. And Igor didn't block the punch, and Igor did roll with it a little bit, but nonetheless, he felt the sting, thus the reason why he shot for the takedown. He was very lucky that that right hand that followed up on the left didn't connect. Because, because that would have, have been a trick. Yeah, he would have been on the deck. Yeah. But as we have seen, Igor can take a shot too. Yeah. And Igor, like you said before, in the break of the last round, he has been in this position, behind on points, behind this, this, and then he pulls out a knockout. We never know what he's got. I don't know that he needs a knockout here because the first round was kind of close. I might have given that to yeah. Igor, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Trey won the second round. If Trey's going to win the third, 
Igor's probably going to win the fight. Yeah, I think so. But Igor, I think, really needs to make a statement in this round. He's got to show, look, I'm regarded from the top heavyweights, Coleman maybe being the top guy because he beat Igor. But a lot of people think because Coleman hadn't fought in a while that Igor was. But now Coleman had a great performance tonight. Igor's having a tough performance. Igor's got to go out there. Oh, right hand by Igor both chances. Going out, going to make that statement. Oh, good left hook by both chances. Both chances hungry. The, no, the thing is about Bochanch, much like much like Evander Hallfield, if you get him hurt a little bit, he's more dangerous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unlike other people. <laughs> yeah, some some other people, you get him hurt, they just decide, well, I'll come back give to the joke. Yeah, I feel him a little belly. Exactly. I know. Bochanch is. Oh, he looks like he's getting a little winded. But... Trey going for the takedown. Very nice. He should pass that guy. And now it's going to be a, a tough one to call. Because if they lay here on the ground for the rest of the round, well, Chanson was the busier in the early part of the round. Yeah. Unless Trey does something significant as far as strikes or passes the guard or escapes in the guard and stands up, it's going to be both Chanson's round. Just on a takedown, you're not going to win the round because, as you said, boss, you can't do anything with the takedown. It should count against you. That's what I do. It's, it's like stalling. Yeah. It's like, why do you want to take somebody down? Because you want to improve your position. It's like holding in a boxing match. Yeah. yeah. Take this out. Yeah, Trey should, should work here. He should really show the people that he's here now to fight. He use his position. Stand up. Knee, knee, knee. Pass that guard. He's almost got the guard pass. Igor going for the sweep, but he's a... You know, he's got a half guard. It's going to be more difficult. He's open also. He can go for a figure four for a hammerlock. Not anymore. But yeah, he still can do it. He can still do it. And if Igor, if he, if he locks up that left hand, uh, he can roll Trey. If Igor locks up that left arm of Trey Telegram, he can roll him. Yeah. Yeah. He could. He can. Yeah, he, he could. could. That's what he should lock up that left arm. Get the get his get his uh, wrist right under his underarm, squeeze tight, and just buck and go to the left. Roll to the left side. Because he's got perfect position here. Yep. Now Trey's going to push himself out. He's going to get the mount. He can create some space now. For he's going to get the mount here. If he gets Eagle to loosen the legs up, he can get him out. And he should work now. He's got like about two and a half minutes left into the fight. He should go for it. He should throw everything out he has. Because also, if he stays in this position, the referee will put it up. Trey really trying, oh, to, trying to pass that strike, half guard. Yeah, push his head down and strike. The point I was trying to make earlier, boss, is is it possible that Eagle lost his fire? Because he really wanted to fight Ken Shamrock. He was very excited about that. Yep. And, and and then he was kind of, he even said he was very disappointed that Ken couldn't make it. Do you think that had something to do with the fact that he may have not taken this lightly over the last week or two or whatever? Yep. No, you're right. You're absolutely right also. Look, this was some good punching. Okay, Trey getting busy here. I've said this before. I'll probably say it a million times again. Fights like this, don't, they'd don't be glad move, I'm not a judge. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Don't move. Oh yeah, I, I, judge is nothing for me. Even a, to be a referee in the ring is nothing for me. It's like, um, I always have a feeling you, you don't see anything, a little detail or whatever, you give the wrong decision. I, I could never do that to somebody. But uh, you just uh, recently made your debut in the ring in something else. You were a ring announcer, boss. Ring announcer. And I must say professionally as an objective person, or a semi-objective, because I know you, you did an outstanding job as a ring announcer. Thank you very much. In, in Rotterdam, Holland, last week for Too Hot to Handle. Um, in this fight, well, Chan, okay, now, will Trey let him stand up here? He should keep going. He should keep punching, punching, punching. He needs a, a, a good, clear difference, you know, the, the, the judge will see he wants to go for it. He has to push himself out now and start hammering away. Just the last minute, throw everything out you got. Now, if Telegram wins a decision, obviously both chance is going to want a rematch. Oh, yes. But he must have that one. And that will derail both chances want and desire to have a rematch with Coleman. Okay, now, 
Volchance has got to get busy. He's got to reestablish his dominance here. He's, he's really got to be careful about to get taken down. Good knee by Trey. Trey could really improve his position, maybe steal around here if he backs up and just goes, goes for a flurry. Yeah, I would, I would do that too, but Trey, two weeks notice. He's real tired right now also. There we go. End of the round. I'm impressed by Trey Telegram. I am really impressed by Trey Telegram because he went into this fight in sort of a, a situation where no one expected him to go past five minutes with both chance, really. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and like you said, nobody in, in, in his right mind would take a fight like this on two-week notice against against a guy like Bob Chancho. And, and also, it's affecting what you said, you know, maybe he lost his fight also, yeah. I, I, I think there's a lot of truth in that. Okay, here it is, uh, Trey Telegram coming and swarming. Igor missing. Igor trying to knee. Igor over that, that overhand right. Igor really trying to establish a good kick to the body. Igor landing a good left hand. Igor's really trying to end this one right here. No. Top decision. Unbelievable. Oh my God, you won the fight. Trey Telegram has beat Igor Volchanson on a unanimous decision. No one expected this. You know why? Because he's a heavy hitter and he just went for it. But not only that, he had a game plan. He stuck to his game plan. He didn't gas out. This is huge for the Lions Den. This is huge for Trey Telegram. If his career had been derailed by some losses in the past, he's back in the picture. Both Chancellor must go back and regroup. Obviously, he's got to be hugely disappointed, maybe even shocked. He's probably going to go home and slap himself and say, what happened? Drink some vodka. Huh? We're in Russia. You can drink some vodka. Forget about it. Everybody loses sometimes, man. It's the name of the game. It will only make you stronger. This is big. This is exactly what Trey needed. Ken Shamrock, although disappointed that he couldn't fight Bo Chanchin himself, really has got to be so proud oh, oh, yeah. that one of his students, one of his protégés, one of the members of the Lions Den, beat the most dangerous stand-up man in, in, in mixed in martial, martial arts. arts. Yes. And exposed weaknesses. Big victory. Huge victory. There's going to be a party tonight in Fort Worth, Texas. Excellent. Excellent win. Okay, right now I'm standing in front of Kazushi Sakuraba's locker room. He's the only one who gets a private room. And what he does in here before a fight is a mystery to us. As usual, the doors are locked. No media, no interviews before a fight. And the people from his team have been coming in and out. And I've been trying to get a peek, but, you know, I don't even know if he's in here, for heaven's sake. Um, usually he eats, uh, maybe he takes a nap and sometimes even plays video games. He seems really, really relaxed before these fights. Um, usually, you know, he doesn't seem to feel any pressure, and he does what he does very well. He usually wins. But, you know, one day I want to get in here, and I want to see what he's doing. Já queria lutar com ele há bastante tempo. É, como eu falei, eu gosto de lutar com os melhores. E como ele é o melhor do meu peso, eu queria muito lutar com ele. Não, eu nunca vejo as lutas do, dos meus adversários. Né? Eu também estou invicto no Pride, nunca perdi. Então, acho que vai ser uma disputa de título.
Mas minha estratégia é que eu sou um guerreiro, eu luto sempre para ganhar. Minha estratégia é sempre lutar para ganhar. Lógico, eu, não só com ele, com todos os lutadores que eu luto, eu sempre entro muito confiante, sempre entro para ganhar. Então, não é porque eu vou lutar com ele que eu vou mudar alguma coisa. Eu sou um guerreiro, eu luto sempre para ganhar, indiferente, indiferente de quem Sim. seja o adversário. Okay, there he is, Kazushi Sakuraba. He's the man here in Japan. Totally is. He's the man in all the world. There's the evil eye again. Now, here's an evil eye coming from Tito Ortiz. Tito fought Vanderlei and won a close decision in uh, UFC Japan. Vandalay does take the flowers from Tito. That's a nice little gesture. And I'm sure that Sakuraba will take the flowers and gives him a kiss. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. Tito's married. Yeah, there's no problem there. That would be very scary, <laughs> man. If he would be. Uh, yeah. This is the one we've been waiting for the middleweight showdown. There's my move. <laughs> you perfectly imitated him. Even the evil one. And here's the guy who always surprises everybody. Every time he comes with something new. Can so, you do it today? Sometimes those uh, things he brings that are new. Here's the stare down. Sakuraba doesn't buy into that. He, like you, boss, tends to look straight down, never looks into the eyes of his opponent. Yes. It's, it's, it's really the opposite of Bruce Lee, who said, never take your eyes off your opponent. For Sakuraba, even when you bow. Even when you bow. Now, I think he's going to go straight for takedown. Straight. He's going to run it, boom, bop, take him down. That's what I think he's going to do. Possibly, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he won't run into a knee. Vanguard Silva, at 24 years of age, is younger than Sakuraba at 31. This is the one, folks. The middleweight showdown. Sakuraba coming out right foot forward, southpaw stance. Vanderlei's got to be expecting the takedown. Vanderlei opening with a jab, Vanderlei moving forward. Sakuraba with a low kick, Vanderlei going to the knees. Vanderlei really on Sakuraba here. Sakuraba trading with Vanderlei. Sakuraba, oh, good right hand by Sakuraba! He knocked Vanderlei Silva down. He knocked Vanderlei down with a right hand. Unbelievable. <laughs> Never. But Vanderlei has been in this position too a few times before. Sakuraba shooting for a knockout here. He's got to make sure he doesn't keep one of his knees. Yeah. Oh, Sakuraba oh, is forced to go for a takedown. This is the new rule. He's all allowed. Sakuraba cannot stay in this position. He's got to get out of this position. He's got to escape from this position. He could be knocked out from that position. Vanderlei, this fight may not go the distance at this, at this pace. Sakuraba down. Go for the angle pick. Sakuraba in a good position, really in a bad position here. Sakuraba could be knocked out in a second. He's got to get the leg. Sakuraba's going to be knocked out. Oh, he's going to be knocked out. He's got to get up. And he's going to get a leg. It's, remember that with, with, with Conan, when he fought. He's going to knock Sakuraba out. Sakuraba cannot take these knees. He cannot. He's, Sakuraba's got to tuck and roll. He's got a full guard. Oh, my God. Oh, the referee calls the fight. Unbelievable. Vanderlei Silva has stopped Kazushi Sakuraba. Oh my God. Sakuraba took a beating at the hands of Vanderlei Silva from knees, kicks. The new, the new rule, the new rule, the new rule definitely favored Vanderlei Silva. It's going to be hard to find an opponent that's going to want to fight Vanderlei Silva under these rules. Jeez. 
He came here to fight just like you said. And my God, Sakuraba, this is the first time he's been stopped with strikes. But he gave, it was 1 minute 38 seconds. Unbelievable. This was a war. Soccer Robin won and he went toe to toe with Mandalay. And he did. He gave him the right hook. Mandalay went down, you know. And wow. Yeah, this is. If there, if there was any question about whether Soccer Robin was being protected, that question was answered tonight. Yes. Because they threw to the, to the, to the wolves. Oh, yeah. Mandalay came out to terminate with extreme prejudice and he did so. Yep. It was, um, and you know, he will get back, and he will go and win again. This yes. is how life is, and now everybody can see that everybody is human. We're only human. Everybody can lose. And if, for real, the new rule, it was the new rule with the whole thing. The new rule did the whole thing. The knees to the head, the kicks to the head, everything. Now, the new rule definitely favors the Muay Thai fighter. Oh yeah. Uh, I, if I were That's a I like the rule. If, if I were a grappler, I would hate the new rule. Oh yeah. Well, here it is in the replay. Vanderlei going with the uppercut, right hook. Sakuraba really trying to knock Vanderlei out here. He threw the head. His special specialty. Van oh, oh, these were hard punches. And you know he took an inordinate amount of knees in that position. Vanderlei had him trapped there. If you can't grab the leg and the, and the, and the Muay Thai fighter pulls the knee back, and Vanderlei just putting a brutal beating on him here. This was probably Vanderlei's finest hour. Oh, God, yeah, he was in the flow right here. Oh, oh, oh kick. That, I can't believe that kick didn't knock Sakuraba out. Or As, that. Sakuraba would quit. He just wouldn't quit. Sakuraba wanted to go out on his shield. Oh, my God. Look at the knees pounding, pounding, pounding. Now he's going to fall on his on the back to his to the guard. He wants to do like a guard position. Now the referee comes in. I'm glad the referee stopped the fight. Yeah, me too. Because Sakuraba is a great human being, is a family man. We don't want to see people take this kind of a beating unnecessarily. And the referee was there to give him every chance to win the fight, but not to let him get hurt unnecessarily. Sakuraba would not quit. Vandalay would not quit either, dishing out the punishment. Jesus Christ, what a fight. What an explosion. Look here, Sakuraba gives him the belt. I hope you're going to see this, because they're not showing it right now. They're showing the reprise. But right now, in the ring, Sakuraba just gave the belt, his own belt, to Vendelay. Obrigado a todas as pessoas que me ajudaram a estar aqui hoje, principalmente ao meu segundo pai aqui, Mestre Rujumar. Eu me treinamos já bastante tempo. E agradecer ao Sakuraba, que é realmente um grande lutador. Já fez vários shows aqui no Pride. Essa derrota não desmerece ele em nada. Realmente, no peso, ele é um dos melhores. Muito obrigado a todos, principalmente a Deus, por eu poder estar aqui lutando e dando essa alegria a, todo, a todos vocês. Sou brasileiro, mas I love Japan. Vandalay is giving thanks to the fans here, and he wants to fight again. He wants to fight Sakuraba again, actually. Okay. So he's going to give, if Sakuraba wants a rematch, he's going to give it to him and say he loves Japan. A very respectful person. You know, you mentioned this, boss. That in the ring when he fights, he's angry. He's he wants to hurt people, destroys guys. But he's a really good guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> really good thing in also would be him against Peter Belfort. I think they should have a 185 pound weight division for Henzo and Sakuraba and people that weigh 185 because the 15 pounds is significant now. Yeah, it's too much power. Let's see what the Sakuraba has to say. Sakuraba said thank you, and he says I was beaten. I he said he wants to fight Mandalay again, too. Okay, so that's great. Oh, because Sakuraba came out and fought.
またフライドに帰ってきたいと思うんでその時はまた応援よろしくお願いしますありがとうございました素晴らしい戦いを繰り広げたリオ選手に皆さん全員の優勝をお願いいたします fight anyone. Next. Yeah, every, that's the that's the big question.、Um, right now, I'm just glad to be here.、Uh, the, the division shook up tonight. Igor lost.、Uh, Trey looked great. So yeah, who knows with the order coming in? I don't know who's going to be in the top ten. Who's going to be there?、Uh, anybody they throw at me, I'm going to take. I need to I need to prove myself. Also, how does it feel? Feels good. <laughs> yeah, I mean,、uh, I'm excited. Fight the games back、uh, where I want it to be, and、uh, we're knocking people out. And、uh, selling more tickets, and that's what the game's about. Yeah, the thing that drove me nuts was that man over to your left, Trey Telegman. Trey, did, did it have a little bit of a rocky feel to it? No,、uh, not to you guys, baby. Not to me. Me, fight. I mean, man, what does it feel like? It feels good, man. I needed this one just for the respect factor and、uh, you know, get back in the swing of things. So I'm pretty pleased with it. You must just be like gloating with pride. Yeah, come on, tell it like this. How do you feel? Right you know, I, yeah, I don't know if any, if any, if any of you ever had a baby before, but you know, when you first see the baby come out and you start crying, that's the most, it's the, the most important things happen to you in your life. Now I've had four kids, and 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 th- those are some of the most important parts of my life that I've had. And I tell you what. Coming in and and hearing guy knock his opponent out and then actually being there to watch Trey defeat Paul Chanson, it's it, it、uh, you know what it ranks it ranks pretty damn close. You know,、uh, I'm very proud of these guys. I'm, a, I'm proud of all, of all my boys back home.、Uh, you know, there's one thing that that will 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 never change and will always be here from the beginning to the end is that we have been here together with each other through the thick and thin. It's been real thin at times. Uh, when I had to go away, and these guys were still training, and we had our problems. We are family. But we are family, and we've stuck together, and we will continue to stick together, and we will become stronger and stronger. We will have our losses. We will have our losses, without a doubt. It happens to every great fighter. But when you lose, it's all the people that you have around you that make you come back and get stronger. Okay, I'm here with UFC middleweight champion Tito Ortiz. Tito. Is this the first time you've been to Pride, and if so, what are your impressions? Yes, this was the first time I've ever been to Pride, and、uh, the impressions are wow. That's all I have to say. This is the real show in Japan, I guess.、Um, some good fights. The fans are nuts. I mean, it's everything went down to a T, I believe. Okay, I'm here with Mark the Hammer Coleman. Now we can see why you have that nickname. Describe the fight with Alan.、Um, at first, I was a little bit confused. I wasn't sure、uh, what he was trying, but、uh, I settled in and I used my power, and things worked out great.、I'm、very pleased. I'm happy. I feel good at this weight, and、uh, I'm just going to continue to improve, and、uh, I want to stay on top for a long time. We've seen an incredible night of action from the Pride Fighting Championship Collision Course. We saw a lot of collisions tonight. Oh yeah, Risa, why do you think that there was so much action tonight? Well, looking back at all the other Pride series, I thought、uh, this night we saw a lot of action because the rules have changed a little bit, and I think that、uh, brought out a lot of good stuff out of the fighters. And another thing, what、uh, surprised a lot of the fans here was the fighters who were expected to win,、uh, Sakuraba, Igor, they lost. Yes, that's a great point. Boss, we saw Heath Herring take care of business. We saw Mark the Hammer Coleman take care of business. We saw Dan Henderson win by knockout, but it was Trey Telegman that rose up like a Rocky character and beat the unbeatable Eagle of Chanson. Unbelievable! He took the fight on two weeks' notice and he showed the world Trey is still here. I'm going straight to the top. That's what he thought. He's both heavy hitters. We said it before the fight began. They both know how to punch. Trey knows how to wrestle too and to grapple. Is he going to use it? In the beginning, he didn't. He rocked him. He took the fight. Took him down. Unbelievable. Goosebumps all over. And if that wasn't enough, we saw Kazushi Sakuraba 
fall prey to Vanderlei Silva's violence and his striking ability. That was an absolute devastating performance by Vanderlei Silva, proving that he is among the top middleweights. I think he wants a rematch with Tito Ortiz maybe down the line. So, on behalf of Risa, Boss, myself, Steven Quadros, this has been an outstanding fight, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Domo arigato, sayonara. Sayonara. Sayonara.